Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Tuesday after the rally. That's kind of a way of computing time now for me. And things are going great around here. Personally, I'm still very much in the process of recovering, but life is very, very good. Thanks be to God. Well, as we always do, let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, we celebrate St. Benedict. So that's also kind of one of those complicated things because like the, um, this isn't like the main feast of St. Benedict. This is the summertime feast of St. Benedict. So Benedictines make a big to-do March 21st. That's really his feast day, but it's always like way too close to Easter in Lent. It's, it's not a great time, but hey, now in the middle of summer is a great time to celebrate. And so there's also the, the summertime feast, which is in the calendar for the whole church, the feast of St. Benedict. And St. Benedict is of such importance such importance. One of the most kind of defining saints of not just the religion, but of Western culture. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the course of the night, Jacob arose, took his two wives with the two maidservants and his 11 children and crossed the ford of Jabbok. After he had taken them across the stream and had brought over all his possessions, Jacob was left there alone. Then some man wrestled with him until the break of dawn. When the man saw that he could not prevail over him, he struck Jacob's hip at its socket so that the hip socket was wrenched as they wrestled. The man then said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. The man asked, what is your name? He answered, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be spoken of as Jacob, but as Israel, because you have contended with divine and human beings and have prevailed. Jacob then asked him, do tell me your name, please. He answered, why should you want to know my name? With that, he bade him farewell. Jacob named the place Perel, because I have seen God face to face, he said, yet my life has been spared. At sunrise, as he left Penel, Jacob limped along because of his hip. That is why to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the sciatic muscle that is on the hip socket, inasmuch as Jacob's hip socket was struck at the sciatic muscle. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In justice, I shall behold your face, O Lord. 
In justice, I shall behold your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. In justice, I shall behold your face, O Lord. From you, let my judgment come. Your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night, though you may, though you try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. In justice, I shall behold your face, O Lord. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes. In justice, I shall behold your face, O Lord. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. In justice, I shall behold your face, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus, and when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The story of Jacob at the Jabbok is a really important one. It has um, uh, it's, it's kind of one of those funny things because it's like if you rearrange the sounds of Jacob, you get the river where he crossed the Jabbok. There's a bu there's a bunch of really neat things in there to unpack, and of course it's it's kind of a really defining moment because it gives you the origin of Israel. So Israel, who is you know very important relation to God as being, this is the people, but it, it's funny because it also begins with this querulous aspect because Jacob fought with. So a man though, so, and, and that's another one of these interesting details of the story. So you can look at this in a variety of ways. Yesterday, we were talking about Jacob and anointing the rock that he was sleeping on because the angels were ascending and descending, you know? Um, this is also a pretty critical moment because the, the story is that he fought with a man. It doesn't say a messenger from God, an angel. And this guy very, you know, quizzically says, why should I tell you my name? <laughs> it's, 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 it's rather playful in this regard. And part of this is also sure, definitely an angel. This is how to read the thing. but. It's also in the context here, especially of the name that Jacob gets, Israel, kind of indicating that this man with whom Jacob fought is more than just an angel. It is a little bit hard to go all the way and say, no, it's like the incarnation because this, the incarnation hasn't happened yet. It's, it's a little bit far to say, no, it's God as in Jesus. But, it definitely sets it up really well because whoever Jacob is fighting with all night long is definitely one who is able to say, I'm not going to give you my name. Just like God is very particular about his name. 
there's a whole bunch of things to say about that. There's a, a show I like out of Tel Aviv called, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, a, it's a funny show. It, it's, a, it's, it's a Hebrew show. It's in Hebrew. Um, and there's this, um, there's this really funny skit that they do, Say My Name, as in the song, if you're familiar with it, but they do it in Hebrew. And it's, instead of being the song, the pop song, it's the names of God in scripture. And finally, when they get to the name, Hashem, the name, the, the, the guy who's singing, you know, as God, simply disappears because no, 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 that's not allowed even in Jewish television. It, it's, it's a really cute thing. So that he doesn't say his name is a big detail, is a big one. Also this very interesting transfer of the place. The, the, it, it may seem like a typo if you're reading it in your Bible or in, if you have the reading in front of you. At first, Jacob says the name of the place is Peniel. And then, like the next line, as he's leaving, Penuel. <laughs> it's, it's, again, a, a remarkable small little change, but also very interesting. There's a lot packed into this reading, naturally. The important part is the origin of the name of the people, Israel. Today, though, what I want to talk about really is Saint Benedict. Saint Benedict, who is the father of Western monasticism, but not just Western monasticism, but kind of by extension, the West. So his biographer is in kind of a really kind of rather important way, Saint Gregory the Great. Now, Benedict is around the world at the turn of the sixth century, so around the year 500. And already by St. Gregory's time, the end of that century, he is well known to be, this is really critical for not just the faith, but the world as we know it. As Christians, we know the proper way of work, that is say work is an important part of our lives, but it may not seem like that. We think of work as being usually that thing that we have to do in order to do the other things or just like some kind of awful curse in life or something like that, but it's, it's really not. In, in the properly Christian sense, work is a manner of sanctification. Everything that we do can be really turned into an act of prayer. And among the things that we do vis-a-vis -vis work, worship is a critical part of that specifically the work which is done for god in fact there's even like a, a phrase that is kind of well known opus dei the work of god meaning worship meaning that thing that we do with and for god i.e prayer we definitely don't think of prayer as work. We might think of being able to put prayer into work or something like that, but prayer itself as work is not necessarily so familiar to us. But properly in a Christian understanding, it most certainly is. It is the very best kind of work. It is the very best kind of way of using our time or energy for the glorification of God. So today we celebrate St. Benedict. The kind of the rule of St. Benedict is two things, prayer and work, specifically all of it, the work of God. He teaches his monks the great value of obedience and still teaches them to this day. And also of humility, which is so, necessary to understand obedience and all of this in that work of God, prayer and work, which is the crowning action above all prayer. St. Benedict left home in Norcia in Italy, Norcia, to study in Rome a little bit before the year 500. And he was incredibly nonplussed. He wasn't studying like to be a cleric or anything. He was studying just because that's where the schools were, is relatively nearby. 
but he found it a really a, a pretty awful place kind of every every sin imaginable he was astounded by how wicked the people were there in what should be a very holy place remember this is already after the fourth century and christianity being made the religion of what was left of the empire and, and then into the fifth century then to the sixth there was a time of great stability and of being able to visit the places of the martyrs and really knowing all of that history very presently in a very uh, close time frame but already by then he was really just not impressed so he went into the mountains to a cave a place called Subiaco Subiaco is a really interesting place in the sense that it's where saint benedict has this really massive realization and understanding of how he has to overcome some pretty fundamental things in his personality in order to be able to really do a work that is worthwhile three things which are very much for everyone this is like human nature 101 specifically the need for the ego, advancement, praise, being the center of attention. The second one, sensuality, all of the things that have to do with lust. And third, this is the kind of a very important one too, any temptation toward anger in all of its different forms. So there in the cave is Saint Benedict, and he is having this very special time overcoming very important human things. Is it possible that he overcame them perfectly? Well, I would say from like my pastoral perspective, that's probably not really the question. I think more importantly, like with any other vice or issue that we have in our lives, it's pointing it out and then making a plan or at least trying to move toward or at least being able to note that these are the things that we have to work on. That matters a lot. But then also actually getting somewhere with that is very, very helpful. Because he knew that he wouldn't be able to convince anyone of anything unless he overcame these things, or at least had a way to overcome them. And so the story of St. Benedict is that he did overcome them. And after that, was able to gather to himself a number of other people who wanted to do this and that monastic life which is already alive in the world there were already monks but they were essentially hermits in desert places were able to come together into one thing a monastery new idea to be able to live a holy life so having quieted his soul he could at least be in full control of the drive of his ego and so be able to create peace around him this was a huge development saint benedict is the father of monasticism as we know it his followers are the monks and nuns of the western world not just the benedictines but really any religious any group of people who have come together for the sake of doing this saint benedict is the one but what about being the kind of the father of the culture. Well, going through this time, the monasteries are precisely the means by which we had to preserve stuff that was written specifically. Also, there are a number of very cool bits and pieces now kind of archeological looking at early places where they were able to do really interesting things scientifically. There are, all kinds of interesting details that lead to much later the industrialization of the world but already with the monks and the monasteries there was a way of gaining increase in, in a rather profitable way from the world the i the, the monasteries some of them are vastly wealthy and we think of them perhaps in terms of wealth but we should also think of them in terms of um, geography. And it's not wealth 
as being the end in itself. That was kind of the consequence. In, in the sense that there weren't other ways of developing it, of, you know, like, let's say you have a piece of land and you happen to have some, I don't know, valuable resource in there, say gold. Well, what are you going to do with it? You have to, you know, dig it out. Well, what, how are you going to do that? Get people. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, you have to have some kind of organizing force. And it was precisely this idea of the monastery that was able to give the organizing force to go through the Middle Ages to finally get to beyond that, that set up the culture of the West as we know it today. And not just for the sake of that kind of wealth, but the wealth of knowledge, which was able to be preserved because of the monasteries. Obviously, you can always make a critique like, well, it was just happened to be that. It could have been something else. Sure, but it was that. So, all right, that's how it came. The, um, some of these monasteries are really quite notable. So St. Benedict's own monastery is a place called Monte Cassino. This is in Italy. Famously in World War II, we Americans blew it up uh, because it was World War II. But then we rebuilt it better than it was. So there's um, some stories in there. I remember talking to a, a guy in St. Peter's Square once upon a time who was really grateful for the Americans for making it better. And this is kind of, it was a very strange conversation, but there you go. Interesting how the history of the world turns out. Also, I wanna point out the monastery of Cluny. So in the Benedictine history, so long after St. Benedict, now this is coming to the end of the first millennium, there was another establishment of a monastery in the idea and following the rule of St. Benedict, a place called Cluny in France. And at that point, at its height, you could go from the end of Europe, so think of like, you know, Spain and the Iberian Peninsula, up to Russia, as in crossing the Ural Mountains, and never actually leave the confines of Cluny. It was bigger than the countries it was in. And honestly, Cluny in France, the place, the wealth of Cluny was much greater than any of the kings of France until much, much later, much later. It, it's, it's, quite of a, it's quite an amazing history. But of course, like with all material things, it goes away. So for example, in the French Revolution, the monastery buildings of Cluny are destroyed. And you can still go to Cluny and find a little tiny, tiny bit of the monastery church, which was you know, the biggest church in the world. And if it were still standing, it would still be the biggest church in the world. It was quite something at a very different time in the history of the world. Something to consider, something to think about. St. Benedict himself though, going back to the guy, his life was steeped in an atmosphere of prayer. And it's precisely from this that comes all the rest. His followers, this prayer that was St. Benedict's life was also the life of those who followed him. From this prayer comes peace. And in this peace comes a deep devotion to the will of the Lord. Obedience, which is a building block of monastic life, so much so that it's like the beginning of the rule begins with obedience, the rule of St. Benedict. It's a very small book. It is modeled on Christ's obedience to the Father. So this is the obedience of every Christian, you know, all of us to God. Humility follows very quickly. Humility, which goes hand in hand with obedience, is decisive in our adhesion to obedience. And all of this is sustained not by mere willpower. Like for example, Subiaco, St. Benedict and Subiaco, that wasn't willpower. That wasn't him deciding to like make himself a better person. That was the grace of God. That was through prayer. And this is also very much the result of that Benedictine ideal. For all of us, we have this encounter with prayer. We have this encounter with work. We live in the world. Some of us do not live as much in the world. And certainly when we think of monks and nuns, we think of people who are not living in the world, but really it is the same for everyone. There is a consecration of our time and the places where we are and the way in which prayer exists in that is tremendously important. In the kind of the final analysis, 
the Benedictine motto, the motto of the Benedictines kind of says it all, that in all things, God may be glorified. Ut in omnibus glorificetur Deus. This is the ideal, not just of Benedictines, but really of Christians. This is what we're all about. St. Benedict is this incredible model and the father of a whole means by which this message has spread throughout all the world. All right, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father's prayer intention this month, that Catholics may place the celebration of the Eucharist at the heart of their lives, allowing it to transform their relationships in a very deep way and to open their hearts to an encounter with God and all their brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we may all share in the inheritance gained through the precious blood of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that respect for life be the primary focus of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are near, newly ordained, that they will continually be shielded from the evil one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For whom or what else shall we pray? From Bill, for a friend going through a difficult trial in their marriage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the sick and elderly suffering in nursing homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the abbot St. Benedict an outstanding master in the school of divine service, grant, we pray, that putting nothing before love of you, we may hasten with a loving heart in the way of your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Good times. Happy Tuesday. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Clement, loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. For the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Everyone, have a lovely Tuesday. We'll see you again tomorrow. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.